All right, so uh, we're going to start talking about transformations of functions. Okay, now transformations are nice because they allow us uh, they allow us to group functions together into families. So, for instance, one of the things students have a hard time understanding is that a function, you know, f of x equals x squared and uh, you know f of x equals 3x minus 2 squared plus 4. These really belong to the same family, okay? This function is nothing more than this guy over here, sort of translated and transformed in certain ways, okay? But they're really part of the same family. So transformations help us to understand that, okay? Um, this video, I'm just going to focus on the transformations that affect the y values or the outputs of our function. Okay, and then the next video, we'll look at the transformations that affects the inputs. Um, so you should have this paper. If you don't, you need to pause the video and copy these down. Okay, so because they're important. Um, so these are the these are the transformations that affect the y values. We're going to look at them. Before we do, just note that. You know that these function, these transformations affect the y values because f of x, you've often been told, can be viewed as this, you know, as, as your output is the same as y. Okay, f of x is very much acting like y. x is your input, but f of x. f of x is your output, f of x or y is your output, okay? So with that in mind, you can see that these transformations are all going to affect the y values or the outputs because they're all happening outside of the f of x, right? This is like f of x plus h, that's like y plus h, you're adding h to y. This is a times f of x, okay? a is outside of f of x, so it's multiplying your y values. Same here with this negative. It's outside of the f of x, so it's going to affect your y values. Okay? So this you should have down um, in front of you. What I'm about to show you, you clearly you don't need to take notes on because you can't. Um, you can't, but I want you to just to, to notice. So let's look at f of x plus h first. And the function we're going to look at is uh, f of x equals x squared. So here is f of x equals x squared. And adding values to to x squared, we're adding numbers to, to our function x squared to f of x is simply going to shift the graph up and down, and that shouldn't be too big of a surprise. So like if I'm going to add 3 here, and you can see that the red is simply the blue shifted up 3 units, right? 1 used to go to, in, in f of x, 1 goes to 1, and now uh, f of 3x, I'm sorry, 3 f of x it goes to, I'm sorry, f of x plus 3. For f of x plus 3, 1 goes to, to 4. Okay, so it just, it adds 3 to your outputs, to your y values. And the effect is it shifts the graph up 3. And similarly, if you subtract 3, or add, add negative, I should say, your graph gets shifted down. Okay? So that's not so bad. Uh, how about this a times f of x? Well, I'm going to go ahead and start by multiplying f of x times 3. And let's see what we get. So what happens? Well, we multiplied f of x by 3. We multiplied all our outputs by 3. So for instance, 1, the input 1 for f of x, the output was 1. For f of x times 3, or 3f three of x rather, the input for 1 now is 3. Okay, so we multiplied our outputs by 3. When the input was 2, the output for f of x was 4. When the input is 2, the output for f of x is now 12. Okay, it multiplied, uh, it multiplied our outputs uh, by 3. Okay? Um, and for comparison, I'm going to multiply, I'm going to make my a my a here, 0.5, see what that does. So 
0.5 times f of x. Okay, so just to keep everything straight, right, this was our f of x. In the blue, this is uh, 3 times f of x. And this is 1 half times f of x. Okay, and you can see the effect of multiplying f of x times 1 half as on the graph, okay? If you, the, the uh, input, when the input is 2 for uh, f of x, the output was 4. For 1 half f of x, the output is now 2. And the input was 3 for f of x, the output is 9. And for 1 half f of x, the output is 4.5. So really, you just multiply your y values by whatever number is in front of f of x. Okay, simple enough. And then the, the effect here is we say that the, the graph is shrunk or uh, stretched vertically. Okay, so I would call uh, 3f of x a, a vertical stretch by a factor of 3. And this would be a vertical, uh, I guess you could say a vertical stretch by a factor of 1 half. <clears throat> Alright, and then the last one, negative f of x. This tends to confuse some students, so I'm going to just broaden my window here. I'm going to make, uh, make this go down to negative 16. Okay, so here's my f of x. Now watch what happens. I'm just going to put the negative in front. Watch what happens. This is negative f of x. It flipped the graph over the x-axis. Right? So some students get confused because it's it's a reflection over the x-axis, but they said, I thought it, ref it affected the y values. Well, it does. It does affect the y values, but when you, when you take the opposite of your y values, you should see that the effect is that you're reflecting over the x-axis, right? When I plug in negative 2, I got, I got 4 as an output. But if I take the opposite of 4, I get negative 4. Okay, and likewise, with when you plug in negative 1, you used to get 1. Negative, for negative f of x, you're going to get negative 1. Similarly for all these points. So you're taking the opposite of all your y values, and the result ends up being this reflection that we, as we noted, over the x-axis. Okay, those are all transformations on, uh, on our y, uh, transformations that affect the y values. Okay. Uh, next video, we'll look at transformations that affect the x values, which are, seem to be a little more confusing for students.